In this video, I'll be going over my workflow for creating corrective blend shapes. Corrective blend shapes are usually used to prevent pinching and volume loss. This can happen on elbows, shoulders, thighs, and knees. So for this video, I'll be using a shoulder up position in order to demo my process. In order to create a corrective blend shape, you usually want to start off with a skinned mesh that already has weights that you're satisfied with. If you create a blend shape from scratch, it can be a very tedious and difficult process. So I'll be walking you through my method, which involves using a script in order to extract deltas from a sculpted mesh. In order to use this specific script, you need to have your skinned mesh posed. So I'll be doing an arm up pose, as I said before. As you can see, there's a lot of pinching going on in the shoulder area. So I'll start off by duplicating this mesh and isolating the selection. Make sure that this is your unskinned version of the mesh. So just go into your channel locks and make sure that there's no history on that. And once you're sure of it, you can go ahead and start sculpting your information on this mesh. I usually start off by getting rid of any clipping that's going on between the inner and outer faces. And once you're done with that, you can see that there are no longer lighter gray polygons poking through the darker gray ones. Once you're done with that, you can go ahead and smooth the outside faces. So here you have a mesh that no longer has any pinching, but you can see that there's a lot of volume loss. So usually my next step is to go into face mode and select a face that would be on top of my shoulder. Here I selected two faces because you have this sort of crease going on. So I'll be going with those two faces to start off with. I'll be turning on my soft select. If you use your pivot alignment tool, you can change the direction of your pivot according to the normal of the edge, vert, or face that you select. So I want to bring my selection up and out towards this area. So this is actually a perfect orientation for my pivot. So if I go ahead and press D again on my keyboard, I can use the manipulator to bring that geometry out and up. Now clearly, arms don't bulge that way, so I'll go back into the sculpting tool and I'll start smoothing that out once more. Now you have to be careful and you need to make sure that whatever you're sculpting looks good from all angles and not just from one point of view. Since you're working with a 3D application, you need to remember that you might be seeing a character from all angles, even if they seem unlikely. Okay, so that's a little bit better. My next step is usually to go into edge mode, and I'll select an edge loop and go into my modeling window. I'll usually select edit mesh and edit edge flow, which will smooth out your edge selection. I'll repeat some other edges until I think this looks smooth and clean enough. I usually go back and forth a lot with what I'm doing while I'm making corrective blend shapes. That way I can make sure that I actually like the way that my results look. Okay, so once again, I'll go into my face mode and I'm going to be bringing the selection out and up, making sure that that volume is kept throughout the entire shoulder. And then I'm thinking that one last time, I'll smooth everything out. And just keep going until you think that your shape looks good. 
It might be good sometimes to compare your new shape to the old one. So I'll go back and take a look at both meshes. So something that happens here that I usually try to avoid is this outer edge on my mesh actually got moved. And let's say there was actually other geo right here that wasn't merged with this geometry. This would no longer be matching with the old geo. So you want to avoid that. So I'll go back in and I'll snap those points back to where they should be. And then you can also go back in and just smooth things out a little bit more. I'll take one last look at my mesh, and I'll go ahead and call it. I'd say this looks good enough. So with the way this specific script works, you need to select your sculpted mesh, and then select your skinned mesh, and just simply run it. I'll be linking to this script on the video description. So after the script does its thing, you'll see that this is your corrective blend shape. This is a very unusual shape that doesn't look good on its own. But if I go ahead and hide both this and the sculpted mesh, and I go ahead and create a blend shape to my skinned mesh, you can see that when I turn that blend shape on, it will break. That's because the input order is currently wrong on these meshes. If you ever create a blend shape after you have a skin cluster already on that mesh, you might need to go into the input order and make sure that blend shape comes after skin cluster on the list. And once you fix that, you can see that your shape now looks exactly how it did when you sculpted it. This is your sculpted mesh. And this is your skinned mesh, and they look exactly the same. So I won't be walking through the process of creating a pose space deformer for this, but I will be assigning the blend shape set driven key to the rotation of the arm joint. You don't typically want to do this, but just for the sake of this demo, I'll go ahead and do it since it's a lot faster. So when your arm rotate Z is at zero, you want your blend shape to also be at zero. And when your arm rotate Z is at 90, you want your blend shape to be set to one. Now, if you scrub through the animation timeline, you'll see that a weird bulge starts happening halfway through. So I'm actually going to change the value of the blend shape in the middle of this animation. So let's say if my 90 degree angle was at 30 and my zero degree angle was at one i'm gonna go ahead and key it at 15 with the value of let's say 0.2 and you can see already that that looks a lot better and you can keep on scrubbing and once more that bulge is still happening just at a later point this time so at 22, I'm going to go ahead and try to find a better value for this blend shape. I'll be giving 0.6 a shot, and I'll keep scrubbing. Now, this may not necessarily be perfect, but it definitely looks a lot better than how it did before when it was pinching. And this is how I usually create a corrective blend shape. 